is to be taught wrongly. If you are taught wrongly, you will believe wrongly. And if you believe wrongly, you will be a victim in life. What is the first misconception around healing? Number one, God is not willing to heal all the time. People believe the day they were not healed, God didn't want to heal. People believe that God doesn't heal every time. There's one demonic explanation of Bible that I heard before. They said Jesus walked into the synagogue every day. The man that was at the beautiful gate was there. He didn't heal him. Did the Bible tell you he was there? Those are demonic biblical interpretation to keep a generation in bondage. Nobody ever came to Jesus and he sent him back. And Jesus is the graphic expression of the will of God. In Matthew chapter 8 from verse 1 to 3, the Bible said Jesus was coming down from the mountain. He had taught for three days non-stop. He should be tired. He said a leprous man walked up to him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can cleanse me. And the Bible said Jesus stretched forth his hand and touched him and said, I am willing. He is ever willing. There is no day you come to God that he can't heal you or he won't will heal you or he doesn't want to heal you. Put that wrong misconception aside. That's why people are not aggressive to receive. Because they think if they are not healed today, they'll be healed tomorrow. The more you are not healed, the more difficult it becomes for your faith to be released. Jesus is healing today. And Jesus is healing now. Is there no man that cometh to me will I in any wise cast away? The second misconception about healing is that some sicknesses are bigger than others. So people assume that, well, headache can be healed, but not cancer. And so when God is touching people, they assume that a small, small case he's dealing with. Let me show you a scripture. In Matthew 17 verse 20, he said, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, if your faith is as a grain of a mustard seed, he said, you will say to this mountain, be thou removed into a yonder place, and he said, it shall be removed. If it stopped there, it would have been beautiful enough that a, a mustard seed spiritual equivalence is a mountain. But it is stopped here. He said, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So if your faith is as small as a mustard seed, nothing shall be impossible unto you. So the same faith that heals headache is the faith that heals cancer. The same faith that heals migraine is the faith that raised the dead. The problem is that in your head, you assume that your faith is not strong enough to handle this matter. If it was an apostle, it would have happened. If it was a prophet, it would have happened. And that's why the situations you should have dealt with in your bedroom, you have traveled kilometers to look for a man to use the same faith that you refuse to use to address that situation. What is the third misconception around healing? Your ancestral sin or ancestral covenant. There's a legal stain in the spirit. Something, there's a legal stain. Something is stopping you. It's a joke. Jesus never and none of the apostles ever told anybody that had any condition that the, the, the altar of their father's house is stopping the power of God. The altar of your father's house is stopping the power of God. You will never see it in the Bible. They are human philosophies. Because when we pray for the sick and they are not healed, in order to satisfy our ego, we now say it's altar. Which altar or which covenant is stronger than the covenant of the blood of Jesus? Many people are in bondage going to repent over what their grandfathers did. When you gave your heart to Christ, were you asked to repent? If eternal life was given to you, you were not asked to repent from the, the sin of your grandfather. Is it the headache or the cancer that you will go back? What, if, what about your fifth or tenth grandfathers? Is it because you know the last three and you know what they did? Do you know how many grandfathers you have to Adam? Can you repent of all their sins? Human made doctrine that have kept people in bondage. And so you, you confess the sin of your father, you confess the sin of your grandfather, and you stop at the fourth bloodline. 
Why not you go to the 50th one? Do you even know if your 50th grandfather is an Egyptian? Funny. You will trace it one day and you will trace it. I'm telling you why people cannot receive healing. I'm an evangelist. Imagine I go to the crusade ground and I meet 20,000 people and I want to pray for the sick and I want to do interview so that all of them will repent from the sin of their grandfather before I pray. I will grow old in one week. In the name of Jesus is enough. He said, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Some of the news are covenants. Some of the news are altars. Some of the news are demons. So whichever need is at the name of Jesus. If you will believe this thing today, you will be shocked. Most of the people that tell you is your ancestry. When they want to deal with it, what do they do? They still tell you to confess the blood of Jesus. They still tell you to confess the cross. It's unnecessary ritual. When you accepted Jesus as your Lord, you already confess the blood, you already confess the cross, you already confess the resurrection. What you need to do is to use the name of Jesus to take what belongs to you. Telling somebody that the sin of his father or the covenant of his father is what's stopping him from receiving healing today is an affront against the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's an insult against the covenant of the blood of Jesus. But many remain in sickness because of their ignorance. Are you ready to receive your healing now? He said he sent his word and he healed them and he delivered them from all the oppressions of the devil. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over every spirit of infirmity. Demons of blindness, demons of deafness, pain causing demons, organ infecting demons. In the name of Jesus the Christ, be bound. In the name of Jesus, come out of their bodies. I command deafening situations be healed in the name of Jesus. I command eye conditions, blinding conditions, be healed in the name of Jesus. I command arthritis, pains on the chest, pains on the joints, pains on the back, get out in the name of Jesus. I command growths on the neck, on the back, on the chest, in any part of the body, right now, on ground, on line, dematerialize in the name of Jesus. I command bone conditions. You couldn't walk. Crisis with the bones. Crisis with the ligaments. Crisis with the tendons. In the name of Jesus the Christ, receive strength. Bones be healed. Eyes be healed. Ears be healed. In the name of Jesus. This our sister here came in here experiencing water discharge from her private part. What about I've been gushing out? Yes. So what happened now? At the instance of the world, she said fire came on her. Ah. And the water yeah. had dried up. My friend here came here with a chronic hyena. Hyena. At the instance of Don't the world, but I got it here. Hyena what? vanished back to her. <laughs> Hymea was cursed. Went back to her. Back to Hades. And they told me I have a cyst. You in my ear. They told you.